go. Awesome. Good afternoon. Yes, welcome to day six of the SCORES Soccer Summit, the final day. Woohoo! Um, my name is Angela Bailey coming at you from America Scores Bay Area, where we have served over 2,000 students and worked with over 80 different school sites in order to provide free soccer, poetry, and service learning programming. Nationally, America Scores is in 12 different cities, working with over 300 school sites, training and working with over 1,000 coaches, all in order to serve 12,000 plus young poet athletes. I said poet athletes because these students are learning to express themselves and life skills, not just on the field, but off the field. We are honored to bring the summit to you here today. We have some incredible speakers. Shout out to Elisa Yano for putting together such a beautiful lineup. We are gonna be inspired by the information that is shared. And then we're gonna take that inspiration and amplify the message into action. One of the ways that you can amplify the message is to join womeninsoccer.org. Thank you to womeninsoccer.org for being one of our lead partners for this summit. Go to their website, sign up, become a member. It's totally free and build the community. Second shout out goes to goal five. Go to their website, check out their apparel. It's beautiful. It's sports and athletic wear for her. It's about time. Thank you to goal five. One lucky participant in this webinar is going to receive a prize from them. You could be that person, so cross your fingers. Before I turn it over to our wonderful speakers, I am going to bring a young poet athlete voice into the Zoom room because that's what we do at SCORES. And this one is called The Queen of Dreams by Melanie Ba and Daisy Infante from the Tenderloin Community School in San Francisco. Over the door, there was more than I thought. Spheres of dreams come back to life as we saw them swaying from wall to wall. We got excited and started to play, laughing and giggling, woke the queen wide awake, dazzling sparkles of black and white, staring at the twilight night. It took nightmare dreams away as they all left with one shiny soccer ball to hold tight and never have a nightmare in their life. Thank you. Take it away, our very own Amber from the Bay Area Scores. Thanks. Thanks, Angela and Alicia. Hi, everyone. We have a presentation today. Um, we are gonna be presenting America Scores Bay Area Girls in the Game. We are really excited to talk to you all about this and to just present our ideas on this platform. And hopefully we inspire some of you to take these on into your, your life, your, your work, whatever it may be. Um, my name is Amber Calderon Bugarin, and my partner here is Ebona Bon Acosta, and I am so excited to be able to present these experiences with my very great friend Amber, and we're excited for everyone to listen in and to hopefully be inspired. Thanks, Ev. So we're going to go on to some introductions, because first, we can say a bunch of stuff and you just do not know who we are, but we have something to interact with you all. We have a little icebreaker question. The holidays are coming, but not everybody celebrates Christmas. So we're wondering if you could invent a holiday, what would it be? If you could invent, you can go ahead and put it on the chat. Oh, hey, Abby. Abby is our guest speaker. Welcome, Abby. Abby. You look so cute. Oh my God, Christmas themed. I love it. All right. So just as Amber was saying, we like to begin our sessions with some fun questions and we want to get everybody uh, a little bit more comfortable getting to know each other. And our icebreaker question is, if you could invent a holiday, what would it be? And go ahead, put it in the chat. All right. We want to hear about what your guys' favorite. We got National National Taco Day. Yes. All kinds of tacos. Al pastor, carne asada, carnitas. Love it, absolutely, 100%. Thank you, Serena. Serena, um, I think that's like a weekly holiday for me, um, at least once a week, for sure. Yeah, National Soccer Day, yes, National Sleeping Day. <laughs> I love these. Coach Amber, if yes. you could invent a holiday, what would it be? Hmm, I had a really good one and then I forgot what it was, but I think, um, 
I'm sorry, Coach Ev, I might steal yours. I really liked yours when we last talked about this national walk your dog day or national like take your dog somewhere day would be really dope. That is awesome. Absolutely. We also got uh, National Mentor Day. Thank a mentor, find a mentor, be a mentor, encourage, encourage mentorship for all. I love these. These are so, so awesome. Oh my goodness. I want to see these chats raining. Thank you so much for everybody. Just to play Farmer Farm Workers Day. I love that. Absolutely. Giving thanks and uh, acknowledgement to those who um, are able to bring us food and delicious things to the world. Thank you so much everyone for participating. Now that we got our brain flowing, we're gonna get right into this chat, this talk, this discussion, collaboration. But like I said before, we're gonna talk a little bit about us so that you know our background and how we got to be here. So go ahead, Coach Ev. All right, so a little bit of myself. Uh, my name is Evora Bonacosta. My students know me as Coach Ev, and I am a Santa Fe and Oakland program coordinator, and my other title is the CM DJ, Chief Music Director of Jams. I, and I love music, and I love being able to bring another element to my practices, and it just... Uh, brings everyone's energy up and I, I love to incorporate these uh, gems in my sessions and um, really bring a different vibe. Um, but a little more about me. So I am a first generation Latina and soccer is a huge part of my family. My father was the number one youth player in Mexico in the early 70s and my brother started playing soccer when he was three and I was one year old so I started watching soccer on the sidelines since I was one so it's been in my life since forever in my life <laughs> and I actually began playing soccer when I was five and I started playing competitively when I was 10 that is a picture of me when I was five years old just starting and uh, I continued playing competitively from when I was 10 to I was 18 years old. And it opened a lot of opportunities for me that I would have never imagined. Uh, I joined my high school team where I played with older girls and I was still playing with my club team. And a really amazing um, opportunity that I had was to travel to a different country with my club team. And instead of having the quinceañera, which is a Latin celebration of when a girl turns 15 and it's celebrating her becoming a woman, instead of having a huge party, I asked my parents if they would gift me this trip with my soccer team to go travel to Denmark to play in the Dana Cup. And then the next week we played in, um, in Gothenburg, Sweden in the Youth World Cup when I was 15. So uh, it was awesome. It, I was extremely lucky and to have these opportunities, um, I am a great, I'm extremely grateful. And it, it wasn't always easy for my family because club is really expensive. Uh, competitive soccer can be really, really expensive. And uh, I had the chance to play because of scholarships, but there was times where my parents couldn't pay or the scholarships weren't available. So there'd be times where I wasn't able to practice for a couple of months with my club team. But um, I was able to continue my love for soccer. And after high school, I would play indoor, I would play in random leagues, I would play against in co-ed leagues. And then a few years ago, um, my very good friend, also Amber's husband, Kevin, uh, asked me if I wanted to start coaching some girls. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll coach some girls. And I thought maybe I'll put a couple weeks, a couple days a week on the weekends, have some games. And when I went onto the America Scores Bay Area website, it was something completely different than just soccer. It was art and poetry. It was service learning. And it was providing these programs for free to kids that grew up in my neighborhood. And I've been with America Scores uh, for the past two years and a half, and it's been an amazing experience to be able to provide these services to my neighbors, kids that grew up in the same circumstances that I did, and to bring the, the sport that I love to, to girls as well. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass the mic over to Coach Ams. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Ev, for that little intro. I'm going to go ahead and go to my slide really quick. So this is me. 
Um, my name, my students call me Coach Amber, or they also call me Coach Ams. And I just want to note that I'm really happy and I feel so gratified and humbled to be here and be a voice for a lot of Latina women in the game. Um, a lot of, some of my story really does align and resonate with Coach Ev's story. So I'm feeling very confident that we're gonna represent the BIPOC uh, community very well and talk about some of the challenges that we have. And I will note that we do have some privileges and I want us to be here to acknowledge them and just like talk about how we can get more girls in the game. So my title is, I am the Civic Center Program Director in San Francisco. And I just work virtually right now with a lot, a lot of sites and schools. I really do miss being on the field. Um, we had a huge league going on right in front of the city hall and it was incredible. So I'm just trying to keep pushing until we get back on the field. Along with that, I am also part of the IFC um, Youth Coaches Academy and IFC is the independent football club that's kind of tied in with scores and it's a little bit of a pathway for students who graduate out of the program um, from, they go into sixth grade and it's like a club um, setting where they can continue to play a little bit more competitively with more opportunities. And it's actually, there's a lot of scholarship opportunities for students. So that's been an incredible club experience for me to coach. Um, I coach high school girls. Uh, I've been coaching with these girls for about three years now. And I'm really excited to be mentoring some of the girls that I actually coach on the field, how to be coaches themselves. So now they're learning how to be coaches and they're like able to bring in some of their own income and help their families. And they're getting a lot of leadership experience. And they are, I just wanna know, the leaders are the captains of the Youth Coaches Academy who are all like 17 and 16. They are ladies, young professional ladies, and I'm so proud of them. Um, the next title I have is Executive Scores Chef. I am known in the office as the girl with the recipes, the sweets, the savory, and it's all usually good for you because nutrition is something very important to me. And I try to talk about this a lot with my students, but that's who I am right now. I started soccer also at a very young age. I started playing when I was four years old and I'm 23 now. So I've been playing soccer for 19 years. I was exposed to a lot of different sports thanks to my parents, especially my, my mom for taking me to all of my practices and events. I continued to play and excelled in high school, whether that be on my high school team or my club team where we also got to travel a little, um, a little bit um, definitely I traveled a lot in California to play soccer and it was an incredible experience being in that all girl space because I want to say a lot of my teammates are now my best friends. So I for sure advocate for all girl spaces and making very meaningful relationships that will further in our lifetimes. And I went to college. So I'm originally from Los Angeles and I decided to go to the University of San Francisco I studied kinesiology and I continued to play on the club team, but I was working too because living in San Francisco is not cheap. <laughs> so I decided to work because it's just a good feeling. You know, it's a good feeling to be able to take care of yourself. And I met a lot of great people. I continued to play recreationally on in adult leagues for free, of course, because there are rarely any adult women playing on these teams. So they, they need us. And I was, I was very happy that I got to play. And my, my mentor, Mauricio, he um, actually took me under his wing when I went to college and he trained me in soccer personally. And we eventually became friends and he showed me this opportunity um, for America scores. And I just remember seeing all of the, like the job description. And I was, I wanna say I was 20 at the time and I was working in a mail room at my, my campus. So some of the job, of the job description I was, telling him I was like I've never done this before I don't know if I can do this but now I'm here three years later started off as a program coordinator and now I'm a program director and I, I want to continue advocating for girls falling in love with sports and poetry self-expression and leading healthy lives yes both of us as coaches we also want to introduce you to two of our guests that are out, a part of our Selecta team. All right, these are 
two girls that are uh, part of our all girls teams out in San Rafael. We have Jamie Mazariegos and Abby Becerra today. All right, and I want everybody to give them a round of applause. Type it up in the chat, be like, yes, awesome. So excited to have everyone, everyone here, excuse me. All right, so I'm going to start off with the first video, uh, which is an interview with Jamie Mazariego. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Right, thank you so much. I wanted to give a huge shout out to Jaime Mazariegos for coming today to do some interview questions about her experience in the sport of soccer. So she's going to go ahead and introduce herself, share her name, her grade, and her school. Hi, my name is Jaime. I'm nine years old. I'm in fourth grade and I go to Coleman. Awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of the summit talk today. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, some questions, so we can get to know a little bit more about your experience with soccer and our America Scores program. So our first question is, how did you hear about scores and soccer? I heard about scores and soccer because I went to the after program. Um, and there's like activities and there's, uh, the teacher said, there's this uh, scores activity we can do. And so I wanted to see what it was, so I joined. Awesome, yes, I remember when you first started and you have grown so much since then. All right, our next question is, what or who is your inspiration in soccer? My inspiration is Coach Evra because she's the one who teached me soccer moves. Awesome, you're an inspiration and I love having you on the team. It's so amazing to see how much you, you develop with your skills. You come to practice all the time, ready to participate and you show up and you inspire the rest of the team as well. Our next question is, how long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing soccer almost three years. Did you start with America Scores? Yes. Awesome. All right. Our next question is, what is your favorite thing about soccer? My favorite thing about soccer is that you get to do poems and arts and you can do moves. Yeah, so in our America Scores program, it's not just soccer, it's also expressing yourself creatively through art and poetry and also incorporating a lot of physical activity through soccer. All right, our next question is, how do you feel when you play a game of soccer? I feel sometimes nervous because sometimes I think someone's gonna hit me, but when I start playing, I, I don't feel nervous anymore because I have to be brave and even though I have, if I'm hit, um, I'll just stay strong. Awesome. Yeah, it can be kind of scary on the field, right? But it, we have our shin guards on and we're making sure that we're, we're moving up away if a ball comes towards our face or anything. Like, but yes, absolutely. All right. Our next question is, what is something you want to see changed in sports for girls? Uh, what I wanted to change is, um, like kids can tell girls that you can do anything, even though boys don't, like boys tell you, oh, you can't do this because you're not a boy and you're a girl. Like, I don't want the girls to feel being teased. Yeah, you don't want to feel make the girls be felt like they were being teased. Absolutely. Yeah. Making sure that girls have that space and feel comfortable to be able to try out new things and participate in soccer. Absolutely. Our next question is, have you noticed a change since you started playing soccer? Yes. 
and that we keep going playing soccer virtually and it's still fun and we can still keep going yeah, you girls do not give up, and it's so awesome to see you girls still participating through our Zoom practices and classes that we're still doing throughout the pandemic. All right, another question we have is, have, what is your favorite move? My favorite move is boxing. Oh, making sure you got that touch. Yes, and you have that balance, absolutely. And our last question for today is, why did you join soccer? I joined soccer because um, my sport is swimming, but I wanted to try a new thing. And I joined and it was pretty fun because I, I don't know, but I wanted to have more than one sport. And uh, now I have two sports and I like it. Yes, absolutely. And making sure that girls have the opportunity to play all sports that they like to play and to try out new things. Thank you so much, Amy. Is there anything else that you would like to share about soccer or scores or your experience with soccer? Uh, yes, I would like to share that girls can do any sport they would like. And like, if a boy teases you that, you can't do this, you're not a boy, and you're a girl, and you can't do that. Um, you don't have to be feeling teased. You just can ignore the boys, and you can do your favorite sport. Awesome. What a beautiful message, Hamie. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating in our summit. Let's give Hamie a round of applause. Woo! Yes, I see. So many amazing <laughs> comments. Yes, Hamie was in our uh, summer program and she is a very dedicated student. And I wanted to give her one more round of applause. Yes, so cool, go Hamie, wonderful. Now I also wanted to give the stage to another super dedicated student that is also Hamie's teammate. I wanted to give another warm welcome to Abby Becerra. Welcome, Abby. You can go ahead and turn on your mic and your camera, and we can get started with some interview questions. All right. I see her connecting right now. All right. Awesome. All right. Hi, Abby. How are you? Are you able to turn on your How are you? Yeah, so the, the, the computer and the phone might um, have a little echo. But, yeah, but I think I, you're good. You're perfect. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming today. Abby, welcome. We got Coach Hamza saying, Hi in the chat. We're so happy to have you here today. Thank you for taking time to join us for our summit. We all want to hear about your experience with soccer. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and you can just go okay. ahead. Awesome. All right. So our first question is, how did you hear about scores and soccer? Um, so I was in this after program called LEAP. And I heard that the teacher announced that there's going to be different activities. And I was like, hey, how about I just sign up in one? So I heard about scores and I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. And the first day I had immediate fun and it was so great. Love it. Yes, it was. It's so great to have you on the team. And I love that you were trying new, new things, even though you had never tried them before. So our next question is, what or who is your inspiration in soccer? Uh, you because you taught me all the things I know. And it's just great. And I have fun. 
That is so sweet. That that means so much to me. And that's what really makes me happy and what really brings out the joy for coaching for me. All right, the next question is, how long have you been playing soccer? Two years. Two years. Did you play with another team or was yeah. your first team? With another team. Mm -hmm. Was it an all girls team or was it a co-ed, which means that you played with boys too? Boys and girls, yeah. Oh, wow. And what do you like about having just an all girls team now? Um, I feel good and it's fun to work with girls who can, uh, who can relate with me. I love that answer. That was beautiful. Yes, and you guys giving, giving that space where you can really um, work together and get to know each other. I love that. All right. Our next question is, what is your favorite thing about soccer? Um, probably that there's so many different moves that you can do. I love that. Yes. And you, you can keep learning and you can even make yeah. your own moves. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Another question. How do you feel when you play a game of soccer? Um, I feel happy and I, I can really feel the breeze through my hair and having fun. Yes, yes, I love that, right? Being outside, breathing in that air, right? And remembering and feeling that you are alive. I love that. All right, our next question is, what is something you want to see changed in sports for girls? Um, I want more people to believe in that girls can do any sports that they can believe that they can do. Absolutely, yes and making sure that girls do know that, right? Educating yeah. and teaching our girls that they have that right. All right. Our next question is, have you noticed a change since you started playing soccer? Uh, yeah, um, I feel like I actually, I'm learning more and I'm so happy that I can just keep on learning and learning. I love that. Yes, you always come so ready for practices to learn more things. And you're always so excited. You're like, Coach, can I do this? Can we do this as a team? And yes, absolutely. All right. Our next question that we have is, what is your favorite soccer move? Um, it would probably be toe taps. Toe taps, yes. Making sure that you're fit, that you got those touches on the ball, right? Absolutely. And it's a good way to make sure that you don't lose your touch. All right. And our last question for today is, why did you join soccer? Uh, well, when I was like five years old, I loved to play with balls. And then... I went to this soccer program I've heard and I loved playing it. And now there's this other program that I joined and I'm just loving it. I love that. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Abby. So we have a bunch of questions in the chat. Are, do you feel comfortable to answer some of them? Uh, let's see. I can read them to you. Is that okay? Okay. All right, so our first question is, what is your favorite position? Do you like to play goalkeeper? Do you like to play defense, forward? Do you like to play midfield? What's a position that you like to play? Maybe midfield. Midfield, awesome. All right, we have another question and, and it's in Spanish. ¿Cuál es tu equipo favorito? What is your favorite team? And I know you speak Spanish too, so. ¿Tienes un equipo favorito? Do you have a favorite yeah. team? Um, uh, it's technically the the team from the fam from my family, and I like watching them. Is Chivas? Chivas, yes, representing. Awesome. All right, we have another question. And what is your favorite poem that you wrote? This is from Co Coach Hamza. <laughs> There's so many. Uh, 
maybe um, um, the poem of love I wrote. Like who I love, my family, what I love doing. I love that, yes. And it's so amazing. Let's see. Yeah, Coach Hamza says he loves the one that you wrote about your family and it's exactly the one that you're talking about. Awesome. Do we have any more questions that I'm missing from the chat? I think we're good. Any other questions we can probably answer at the end of our presentation. We'll have a few minutes at the end. I want to give another amazing round of applause to Abby for being here with us. Thank you so much, Abby. We got the chat going off. Thanks, Abby. Woo, yes, thank you so, so much. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next topic where we talk about the challenges that we meet and that we face now that we have these all girls soccer teams. Coach Ants. Thanks, um, Coach Ev. Also, thank you, Abby and Kami. I'm really glad that we were able to hear all of these things from a player's perspective. They are the epitome of our program, the youth, the kids, because they are our future. And I'm, I feel very proud that we're able to have some of our students talk on here. And as you can see, the program has been such an incredible space for Jamie and Abby. And of course we have other teams. So we are making progress in the soccer community. It's getting better, but we also do know that there needs to be some changes there. We feel that there are still challenges that need to be addressed. And we are working on finding solutions with ourselves, with our coworkers, whether that be talking about it, having open discussions, and even in our program by trying to have more all girls teams. So I'm gonna start off with the first challenge that we see um, as coaches, because we both, we both experienced it as players from different ages. And now as an outside perspective, like we are the coach, we are in control of the space. It's been very interesting to kind of align it and parallel it with our past experiences. So definitely I've noticed that developing specifically young female athletes is a challenge because it's kind of hard to recruit girls sometimes. And I did see that question in the chat and I hope that I, I can address it with um, this part of the topic. But um, I heard this comparison from a professional basketball player on a different summit. I don't remember her name, but I thought it was just brilliant. Girl soccer and boys soccer is apples and oranges. We cannot compare the two. It's two completely different things. They're both wonderful things, but especially in the developmental side of youth, their specific needs need to be uh, truly taken care of. So for instance, uh, there aren't a lot of all girl teams, like usually it's co-ed and the difficult part in that is that girls aren't usually at the same athletic level as boys. And that's not anybody's fault. And I don't think that's a bad thing either. Just girls aren't usually taught some of the basic part, um, movements of athleticism and sport, such as running. Even I was, I used to coach in high school when I was a senior and I was coaching the freshmen. The way that some of them ran was very interesting to me and I was very happy that I was there to correct it but it is it is true um, a lot of girls don't really know how to run properly so that they can sprint fast or how to like change gears how to breathe properly when you're running no like not even how to jump or how to do different types of exercises that are vital to the sport of soccer. So having all girls spaces really does foster this environment where they can make mistakes and where they can use these, this time to learn the basics and to better prepare themselves for future play. So I do believe that there need to be all girl spaces and coaches need to be trained on how to how to take this into account into their training sessions with a lot of patience and intentionality. Um, another huge problem that I have faced with my own students when we were in person is that when there is a co-ed space, girls are usually feel intimidated or scared. The biggest uh, fear that I've gotten is that they're afraid that the boys are gonna kick the ball hard at them because they, they don't know how to kick the ball yet. 
Um, and with that said, I definitely hope to take this on with my career in America scores with more girls teams more girls teams were girls, just like Amy said, like, or Abby, I don't remember, but I feel like you both would really um, say this is true to you too. Having people, girls who look like you and relate to you going through the same thing that you are. And even by having this, maybe their self-efficacy rate like rises, maybe their self-confidence uh, reaches even higher levels and they're able to teach their teammates, their girlfriends, their cousins and whatnot. So tying that in with the second point um, with an all girls space and developing young female athletes, I do feel like there need to be more well-trained women coaching on the field. Representation is so important, but I don't think that there are, first of all, a lot of women who are head coaches out there on club teams and even on our America Scores teams, I would really love to see more female representation, female BIPOC representation because mostly our demographic is BIPOC and also more well-trained. I'm very privileged that I went to school for kinesiology and my America Scores has helped me with personal development, going to soccer trainings on how to be just a, a good coach, a good soccer coach. So I wish, that in the future that may, whether it be me or Ev or any other one, maybe someone who's in the audience who is inspired by this training women to coach other girls. I do believe that men can coach women too. Some of my favorite coaches when I was growing up were men, but it's just something else when it's someone who looks like you and you can kind of see yourself in them in the future. And those are my two points and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Evra. Awesome. Those were amazing points. Thank you, Amber. And going off of that last point and having these well-trained women coaches, uh, we want to be able to have these coaches teach the science and history of women in the game to these young developing female athletes. And another challenge that we face is uh, girls not having the knowledge to take care of themselves, their, their, bi their bodies, their minds, their emotions. Um, or their, how to take care of their health. And also another challenge that we face is uh, them and knowing their rights to play in sports. Um, a lot of issues that girls face uh, about their health is shunned by negative stigma, but we wanna celebrate them. I wanna celebrate them and teach them that they are powerhouses, that they are strong young athletes. And we wanna teach them also about their rights as athletes and talk about the history that has gone past and that has led us to the point that we are at right now. And we're just a stepping stone. We can we wanna teach them about Title IX, that is their right as athlete girls to participate in any sport that they want to, regardless whether it's a male dominated sport. Um, I once had a, a class with my students to celebrate National Women and Girls in Sports Day. And I was able to put in a slideshow with images of different women athletes and videos and facts. And one fact that really stunned the girls was that boys have a million more opportunities to play in sports. And that triggered something that was impressive in my in my team. They went and talked about it to their teachers, to their classmates, to their families. And through talking to their, their peers and their friends, we were able to bring even more girls onto the field. And that was something that I thought was absolutely beautiful and that we need to continue talking about so that we can continue up this ladder um, so that we can have more girls on the field. Um, another another uh, challenge that we do face is having more familial support for the girls, right? We want to bring our families even into our teams just as much as their their daughters are involved. And we do understand that it can be hard to be able to engage as much because our parents are working and they're making sure that they have food and shelter for their families. And we want to be able to face these challenges through providing spaces and information for our families about our program through our website, having them 
in certain um, on certain pages where they can find information about their team, all of the amazing things that the students have been doing, art, poetry, soccer, and giving our parents also roles to have them be more engaged, whether it's a uh, team manager, team, team assistant, team uh, assistant coach, giving these different opportunities to our families to really engage and to uh, be a part of the team and to grow the family even more. Um, that are some challenges and we're so excited to face them and run forward so that we can continue growing as a program and to get more girls on the field. So right now we are open to questions and thank you everyone so much for listening in. We hope you all were inspired uh, from our presentation today. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Amber and Ev. Um, we do have some questions and that was great. Um, loved having the girls on. Abby was awesome. Love having her. Um, so here's a couple questions. Um, when you do um, coach boys and girls at the same time, how do you ensure that the girls get the attention that they do need? Because a lot of times it seems like the boys kind of take the, take the space up a little bit more. Whichever one of you wants to answer it, it's yours. <laughs> um, I can go. So a way that I'm able to incorporate and give the attention that girls need is when I see that a, a young boy is accelerating and he's doing really well in the activity that we're doing, I give him a leadership role. I'm like, you're doing so amazing. Now we're going to go and teach our teammates. We're going to go and teach the girls, give her good tips. And that way the girl is getting not only support from her teammate, but also getting the attention that she needs so that she can have um, more work on her skills. Great, that's awesome. Um, Amber, do you wanna add anything on that? Uh, I totally agree with Ev. I think that's a great way, not only to have another player take a leadership role, but also for um, if it's a girl player some or someone, them to have another person who's like at their same age level mentor them. I think that's a really good way to do it. Um, if I had enough girls, I would probably have everybody doing an activity where I group them and I'd have the girls be grouped together. So, cause they're, if they're at the same skill level and definitely on some of my teams, I've gotten girls who are at the same level as some of the boys. So I've, if they wanted to go with the boys, I was totally fine with that. But I just feel like grouping the girls with people who pretty much look like them, other girls, creates this type of trust and they feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to follow that up with a question from Hamza about how often do you merge the girls and boys in a co-ed league? So um, for, I can speak on behalf of the San Francisco leagues. Um, San Francisco leagues, we have all of the teams and they're all usually co-ed, but the thing is that there's not a lot of girls on the co-ed teams. There's maybe like, we have, I want to say like 10 during in-person, we have about 12 sites or 12 to 15 sites. And so 12 to 15 teams. And most of them are boys. Most of them are boys. We start that off from peewees, which is first grade and that's juniors, first and second grade. And then we have third through fifth grade is select. So they're pretty much co-ed the whole time. But what we've tried doing this past in-person season was a whole selecta, which is the girl version of select league with just girls teams. So that was, I thought it was pretty successful. It was definitely, it's gonna take some time and COVID disrupted that progress, but we're gonna keep working on it because the girls that were there, they kept coming back. They kept coming back because they loved it. Yeah, great. Um, here's, this is from an anonymous attendee. Have you done any big brother, big sister team or player parents so older kids can help younger kids? We have a very um, large Latin community in San Rafael called Canal, where a lot of our students from our schools live. And so um, students that have moved on to middle school have siblings that are in our select teams or our junior teams, and they come to game days and they'll help referee or sometimes a help coach. And they, the kids love seeing that because they see not only older siblings, but other students that have been participating in the program and they see these other opportunities to coach or to, to, uh, to ref games. So 
those are some examples. Thank you. Uh, um, sorry, another example that we have of that is we actually have something called the Youth Coaches Academy, which is part of IFC. And some of the students who are about like they're in high school and they're learning how to be coaches, they were SCORES alumni. So when they were in first to fifth grade, they were in SCORES, but now they're older and they're learning how to be coaches. And eventually we want to put them at sites at, with uh, younger students. So that's something else that we're working on right now. They're working with IFC and younger club teams. Great. Um, how do you recruit girls to play the game? I can start this one. Um, I would physically go to schools and just hang out with them and just like strike up a conversation. Just be like, hey, how's your day? Oh my gosh, are you in soccer? It's just rapport, building a relationship with these girls, not just as a coach, but like, hey, I'm a girl too. Like, I love to like hang out and, you know, I would love for you, I coach a team. Would you like to play soccer with me and like other girls? Like get your girlfriends, get your girlfriends to come and just try it out. That's, that was my coach voice, but that's how I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Echoing that, absolutely. And it's about uh, creating that relationship before, because uh, sometimes girls can be really scared of the sport and can be scared of getting hit by a ball, but really um, making sure that you create that strong bond with them beforehand. And yeah, just asking them how they're doing and talking about things outside of uh, the sport or things about their day that has happened or their weekend and just having a conversation with them. Do you find that most of the girls are um, are new to soccer, so they've never played before? A large uh, amount of them, yeah. Well, it's great to get them in then for sure, especially with you two as their coaches. Um, uh, what rewards do you offer students for participating in the program? Or do you offer rewards? We do, we offer prizes for participation. We offer, um, we offer soccer balls, especially now during virtual learning. We, whenever a student is part of a team, we make sure that we provide them. And this isn't a prize or award, it's just to get them the resources that they need in order to participate in the program. It's soccer balls. But during our in-person season, we're like, you guys come to game day, you guys get your own jerseys, your own shin guards. And we, we, we do that. And we also have contests. We have poetry contests where students can win prizes. Um, we, we give them journals, pencils, and all kinds of other things. Go Jams, any, anything else? Yeah, um, so just the whole prize situation has been shifted a lot since COVID because at game days when we were in person, we had something called badges or patches. And at the end of every game day, depending on like how the coach wanted to lead it, the coach or a parent or even another student would offer a badge that said leadership or commitment to another student from the opposing team um, and like just to shout them out. So that was not really a prize, but just some type of ritual that we had to, um, to bring the kids together. Also, so at the end of the season, we give out medals for participation. This season, we're giving out certificates of completion for the virtual season. And at our game day in San Francisco, we give out, we mail out prizes and that could be a shirt, notebooks for poetry, um, when they do a really good job of participating at virtual game day. Nice. Um, so beyond the coaching and developing soccer skills, do you focus on nutrition, uh, emotional health, and what different methods do you take for a wholesome approach to develop the students as both humans and players on and off the field? That's a big question, I know. <laughs> Have you, can I start? So honestly, our whole program, I feel like covers that because we're not just soccer. We're also poetry and we're service learning. So with those three basically like columns of our program, we have in soccer, we do talk about nutrition. We try to like have check-in questions about like, why is water good for us? And uh, based off of the topic that we decide and it teaches them like exercising and we keep them active. With poetry, we talk about expression with different types of lessons, whether it be the color of my feelings or storytelling. And that really does help with the emotional connection and um, expression, self-expression, whether they wanna share it or they wanna just keep it to themselves, either is fine. And with community service learning, uh, we just did a project with this this past season um, 
we get to learn about empathy and being there for our community and what's important, why, how we can be advocates as youth. So those are our three columns that I feel like hit all of those parts of the question. So did you want to um, bring in yeah. something else? Yeah. yeah, so when I come to coaching and to my, my teams, I always think of what's something that I would have loved to hear growing up? What's that voice that I didn't hear that was able to support me? So when I am coaching or teaching, I, I, I'm real with them. I'm like, yesterday we had a lesson. They're like, oh, I feel broken. Like they drew a heart with like a, like a little bandaid on it. And I'm like, but that's beautiful because it, because when you're broken, you're able to put your pieces back together and you're stronger. And I told them about, and I connected with different things uh, in our world so that they can connect with different cultures and different ideas. I talked about the Japanese art where when you break a piece of plate, they reunite it with gold and it's even more beautiful than it was before. And they were like, wow, gosh, that was awesome. And they're like, <laughs> they enjoy it, they love it. And they, they really appreciate it when you're, when you're real with them. Definitely. Thank you. Um, and Amber, thank you, because I was, my next question was actually going to be the three pillars of uh, scores, soccer, poetry, and service learning, how, you know, they all tie in with soccer to make the overall um, whole person um, more able to more confidence, um, able to deal with um, situations um, with their peers. So I, I'm thankfully you uh, covered that. <laughs> so um, is there anything else you wanted to add on to that and how maybe the three tiers kind of work together? Yeah, for sure. So soccer is just the hook. It's just the thing that brings in everybody. And we do have poetry is getting bigger. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, like we had an amazing Oakland slam, but everything has been kind of like put on pause and we do things virtually. But with soccer, you work as both a team and individually because you have to learn how to kind of pull your own weight and have this to make the team chemistry work. With poetry, it's like working on the individual part that like is your role in a, in a soccer team, right? Um, and then with the community service part, that is another, that's the team aspect of being in soccer. So I feel like kind of like poetry is like the self and you could also do a team poem, but it's mostly focusing on the, the self-expression and then community service is the whole working as a team to find a solution to a problem. And then soccer is just how you find those values when you're with the team on, on your own, basically. All right. Nice. Do you, I'm just curious with um, some of the community projects, do you have them just the girls work on a project and the boys work on a project or is it always co-ed? Sorry, would you be able to re repeat the question? I was looking at the chat of a shout out from Laura to uh, her daughter, uh, Abby, saying that she's so proud and she she loves all the confidence that her daughter has gained from being in the program. She's so proud of her for being brave and speaking to the audience. And that is just nice. Amazing. Thank you for that, Laura. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alicia, would you be able oh, to no, repeat that's the okay. question? I was, I was just kind of commenting that um, for soccer, when you're on an all girls team, you kind of have this sisterhood and bonding. And I was wondering if you take that for community service within the program, and do you have community service that just girls work on a project and boys work on a project, or is it always co-ed? Um, out in San Rafael, we have Selecta, and so the girls have their own league and the boys are separate. So we do our community service projects based by team. So each team gets to work together and they decide what's an issue in their community that they, they see and that they wanna help with. And so our girls go out and they figure out which topic they want to um, help with and there's been um, times where they go out and help people that don't have food and they'll in when we were in person um there are some other um bigger community projects that there are combinations of boys and girls um and an example is the canal cleanup that we've been able to do and it's where the students in the canal come out and they learn about 
recycling and trash and upkeeping their community and keeping it clean. And they, they've learned to go and pick up around their homes. And it's been just a wonderful way to see how they all collaborate and work together, boys and girls. Thank you. Those, they're all great projects too. Um, we're gonna change, just go a little bit, um, have a couple more questions. And this one is from Norma. Um, why do you think there's a difference in the athleticism in girls? And how can they be introduced to it at a younger age? Um, I think this is a really great question that has a bunch of different factors. So I think there's cultural factors based off of the demographic of the students. I think there's also um, like a monetary, like uh, how well they do or the socioeconomic level that the student is at and just gender roles um, in general, when we go to a toy store, like who has the cooking and the cleaning toys, it's on the girls aisle. So already girls are kind of geared towards playing house. And while the girls during recess are playing house and like doing all these other things, the boys are like playing tag or whatever. But I definitely think that's a huge factor. And also culturally, um, in a Latino family, the girls help around the house. So usually when the boys go play, the girls are helping with like either the laundry or like the cooking or, and socioeconomically, sometimes we have to like get jobs. So, or we have to like stay home while, and watch our um, younger siblings while our parents go work. So we, maybe they don't have a lot of time to go outside and play. But I think a huge, another huge, um, influence for young people, for young girls to learn how to be active is it just has to be in a state of play because young students will not understand how to do a skip or how to lunge or how to do any of that unless it's their mind is like, okay, I'm playing a game. And that's usually how we engage students to, to retain those movements. Great answers. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Um, that was amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just as Amber was saying that boys get introduced to the, the sport at a, such an earlier age, so the skill level is different. But ways that we can introduce this is by um, having more girls that look like uh, our developing uh, athletes to be an inspiration to and, and seeing that more frequently. And we we are that stepping stone and we are providing more of those opportunities to the girls. Thank you, definitely are. I think we have time for one more question. And this is a question we've been asking all the speakers. Um, with the summit, we are trying to bring in um, top leaders in the soccer community to share and give um, kind of their thoughts on how can we better the game for women and girls, both on and off the field. So in in knowing that, what are your personal goals, dreams, um, and what would you like to see from the community in its improving the game I mean, the next five to 10 years? And uh, let's start with you, Amber. <laughs> um, so my personal dream is to go back to school and to learn how to teach nutrition to kids and young girls so that they like and like kind of like make it together like make I want to do this with scores too like have a, an AMS kitchen and have time to keep teach kids how to make healthy foods for themselves and right next to my kitchen there's um, a field of dreams and then right after we go play soccer of course after we clean up but um just uh, having more women coaches is definitely something I want to see. And I can see that in the future of my club team that I coach. Uh, already there's two, these two girls, Ruby and Daniela, and another girl, Heidi, who were SCORES alumni, and now they're becoming coaches. So I want to continue this progression towards having more BIPOC representation for my teams, having more access um, for the girls to have these opportunities to play soccer. Well, I also think that if you've mentored them and they've enjoyed it, that they're going to pass that on to the next generation. So I think that's really commendable. Um, Ev, what about you? Um, my dream is also to go back to school and continue uh, my anthropology studies. And my dream is to really connect people and to really see that we have 
we're not so different. We're the same, but we are different, you know, and, ex and, in, and embracing those differences and being able to learn from one another. From the community, I wanna see um, th those connections within our um, boys and girls leagues, being able to reduce that stigma of girls that can't play soccer and being able to provide those, um, those opportunities for the girls, teaching our families and the community that it's it's not going to be healthy for our girls to continue um, growing in that way, and instead providing these um, these programs to the girls so that they can find that confidence um, to continue a sport that they love. Thank you both so much. If you know, just seeing the two girls that you um, brought in today and their confidence level, and at their young age, I, I can't even imagine you know just in a couple of years how much more they're their self-esteem and confidence is gonna grow. And that is just a wonderful thing. Um, thank you both for coming out today and speaking. And I wanna thank everybody out in the audience and our partners, um, Women in Soccer and Goal 5. And we have one more session left at three o'clock and that is kind of a culmination of every, all, all the sessions together. We're gonna to try to put some action items together and take what everyone is said and um, make make some actions on it. So thank you so much, Amber and Ev, um, appreciate it. And everyone out there, and we will see you hopefully at three and have a good day and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye, thank you so thank much. You, stay safe, everybody.